Welcome. I'm really looking forward to addressing today's topic, basically what to do when your partner isn't into personal growth. It can be so painful. That's what I've called it. There are so many different ways that personal growth can manifest that you can be inspired to really work on yourself to employ a growth mindset in how you interact with yourself, with others, and with the world at large. This was by no means meant to be an exhaustive list of expressions of personal growth, but if you're watching, I'm assuming that you have some sense of what this means to choose your way forward, to have something in your life that you want to be better within yourself, your self-talk, your fitness level, your career, whatever it is, how you parent. And so you have devoted yourself to learning what you need to learn and changing yourself so that you can enjoy your own company more, so that life can be more meaningful, so that you can feel more empowered. One of the most painful things is when your partner doesn't join you on the journey. When your partner is just so focused on getting things done and work responsibilities and just falling into bed exhausted, when your partner doesn't slow down enough to know how they feel and to connect with you where you feel, but in terms of what's available to you in the relationship, somehow that plateaued while you continued to grow. This is something that is so painful, so challenging, and so important unless you're one of those incredibly blessed couples where you go to some Tony Robbins event together and that's your exposure or you read a book together or whatever it is the point is that your journey begins together and you both want it and then sure maybe you go on a detour into exploring Tantra yoga or whatever it is and your partner doesn't do that with you but you're still on the same journey in fact your partner goes for walks every morning and you like to stay in bed you know there are ways in which the journey is not the same all the way along but there is something wonderful when you start the personal growth journey together and it becomes a kind of momentum and a fuel in your relationship. One of the first things that arises typically is feeling like you need to decide between your personal growth and your relationship. And many of us, I definitely had a phase like this where I had my attention on growth. And while my husband is extremely growth oriented for good reason, he was just super, super focused on work. He was working long hours. Things at work were what was most likely to be filling his mental real estate. These were the thoughts he was having. These were the challenges he was negotiating. He was leaving early, had a commute, worked 10 hours and would drive home. And during this phase, I had a more peaceful life. In my particular situation, I was homeschooling four children, but that the way that I did it had a lot more spaciousness and not a lot of frenetic moments. And I really had an opportunity to gestate and grow and expand. And during this time, at first it was completely unconscious. It was actually my personal coach at the time who said it and I was like no but then I was like actually yes there's a way in which I started holding myself back because for me married for I forget how long it was I don't know let's say 18 years at that point and it could have been 15 I'm not being precise and it really doesn't matter but it was more than 10 years and less than 20 
We have four children. Our life was created together. And I was more devoted to our life together than I was to my own personal growth, at least at first. The more comfortable thing for me was to essentially clip my wings so that our capacity to fly was more even. And I operated, as I say, unconsciously at first with this orientation until it became unbearable, until I felt like I was very slowly dehydrating and almost dying inside. Because for me, personal growth, it's, it's like oxygen. It's, it's part of what fuels who I am and how I think about things. And if something is going well, there's something to learn. And if something isn't going well, there's something to learn. And if I screw up, there's something to learn. And I, if I feel someone else screwed up and it impacts me, there's something to learn. This is how I orient. And to have to clip that, I, it was a little bit like the frog in cold water where the temperature is slowly turned up and then it's boiling and they die when they could have easily popped out, jumped out in the case of a frog. That was the phenomenon for me. I just didn't realize how significant this was.